This March Madness Picks Part 2 edition of the Sports Game on Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head to Cut.com, that's K-U-T-T dot com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by SGPN subscriber-only March Madness Bankroll Challenge. Free to enter in up to $2,000 in prizes. Enter today at SportsGameOnPodcast.com slash madness. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit HOFBets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer? dog first half unders one and one shout yes. out to UVA for making an early exit <laughs> and shout out to my Hokies for advancing to the second round of the prestigious NIT college basketball championship. And that concludes the NIT talk for this episode. Joining us on the line to talk all things in studio. I'm used to saying on the line, all things college basketball. You know him, you love him. Colby Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Well, I mean, I, I'm a bit disrespected with that introduction. Not the, uh, not, not, the, not the part of, like, you know, uh, used to saying on the line, but I'm saying uh, we did give out a little bit of fire. A little bit of fire, me, me and the bet detective, and also on this last, sh- you know, last night's show, I did crowbar in a a nice little nit play of plus two twenty five South Florida eighty three UCF seventy seven. <laughs> we, we now just we're done. Uh, now yeah. we're done talking about that. All right, now yeah. we're officially done. Uh, Virginia comes in. Great start for the March Madness betting commandments. Thou shalt not worship false idols, a.k.a. Tony Bennett. Uh, now 8 and uh, 15 ATS. 8, eight and 15. <laughs> and, uh, of course, last night before, while we were uh, right after the show, Kramer going, I know UVA is going to win. Colby going, yeah, they bullied me into taking UVA. How, or, sorry, into taking Colorado State. How about the Mountain West? Well, let me explain myself, Sean, because I feel... I feel sure. like you're, you're snorkeling a little bit. Like, Colorado State has been better than Virginia all season. Yes. But Virginia has a knack over the over Tony Bennett's entire knack era. Knack of not scoring points? No, a knack of, of beating. Like, they beat Florida. Florida is a team that many people are saying is a Final Four team this Why year. Why are we still talking about these losers? Yeah, Virginia just occasionally can do this. They, they won a national championship on somehow beating teams they should have never beat. So it was logical to say, oh, man, Colorado State's going to have to play in the muck. But we st- I still took Colorado State, though, and I want my, <laughs> I want my street cred, all right? You tried to Benedict, and we wouldn't let you, Colby. <laughs> there you go, Benedict Dan. Also rounding out the TCE crew, we got Moneyline Mac himself. Ready to, uh, I, I don't know, are you like a Boeing uh, airplane pilot here, I mean, Mac? look at this, well, dude. I mean... I'm just looking got at the, the shades game. on Colorado state minus two and a half. I should have taken <laughs> some winds 22. coming in from the Northwest. I should have um, ta- t- <laughs> taken 22 and a fucking half. Get this ACC bullshit <laughs> out of here. This league sucks. How about the mountain West? Easy winner. Welcome to the dance. Yes. Uh, mountain West getting off the schneid here. And of course, as well, Noah B what's happening to Noah. What's going on guys. I have a couple of things to promote, I guess college baseball. <laughs> okay. Kramer just handed me off my ticket. On Clemson, uh, that's one hundred dollars to win four grand. Shout out to Kramer for getting that oh for me. Uh, picking he, it up. He's touting like uh, he's touting like cousin Mush at week nine of the Survivor. <laughs> that, oh, that he's already <laughs> he's already imagining his trip back and the giant. I mean, 
Cousin Mush walked through multiple things he was going to have to do to come back and get his million dollars. You can already, I should probably get the tax guy, yeah. get a phone call now, get on his calendar for how to handle Eight. the million dollars. You know, you know what they say, the first thing to do is to hire a lawyer. That's when you, when you win the lottery. So just a little advice. 18 and two for my Clemson Tigers. And also the second thing that I want to shout out, he's sitting in the corner right now. Brent was our base goal, like Uber tr taxi driver. Shout out to him. He was at base <laughs> goal. That's a great word. Yeah. That's and, the and, middle and of and two I'm words. With you. I'm whatever. with you. No, he's great. Brent. Hey, he's on TV. Look at him right now. Let's there you go. go. Uh, no, he, he was fucking very kind. The man. Because, uh, you know, Uber Uber has been... been I, I believe Uber is a bit of a hoax right now. Like, they, they've given me two plays recently that I'm going to fade in a parlay. I told you about this last night. Uh, we're going to take Gonzaga. We're going to take Kansas. We're going to parlay that and fade my Uber driver who told me he was going to fall asleep. So it's much, much better to ride... Uh, now, now, Colby... I thought uh, you were going to do all that to, to fade his picks. Colby. Well, he was going to fall asleep, so I can only imagine the way he picks. But yeah. McCullough is out. Now, when we picked, uh, when you picked and locked up Kansas last night, he was not officially out. I picked Sanford, got some great closing line value uh, with my play. Are you switching your pick? No, not at all. Because, okay. because here's what you don't realize is they're not playing the Big 12. They're playing Sanford. Mm -hmm. And Bill Self took Tulsa to the Elite Eight with a guy named Eric Coley and a bunch of scrubs. All right? And they went to the Elite Eight. Does, it, does Bill Self still have that fire in his eye? He still does, man. If anything, he has it more so because last year he missed it because he had a heart attack. Mm. Sanford and Son, wow. look out, Kansas. Uh, especially no Kevin McCuller. Dark turn. The show just took a dark turn. <laughs> Why? Bring it up, He's Bill bringing Self. up heart, attack, heart issues. <laughs> what do you mean? We're, we're in Vegas. We don't want to, you know... <laughs> Let's knock on some wood. I, I, this is why we should take Kansas. You're on Kansas, right? Colby, is it weird doing a live show without um, skull crushing echo going through the speakers? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> is, is it weird being able to hear yourself and have the audience listen to the show at the same time? Hey, is that a weird I, I wanna, experience? I want to congratulate you guys for, for making sure that the SGPN product was top notch. <laughs> Stopping by the bar that you passed <laughs> that you pass on the way to the fucking hotel. As I saw him. Uh, as as I FaceTimed him from Circa, and then I FaceTimed him 10 minutes later from the fucking hotel. So I see <laughs> where we sit on your fucking totem pole, <laughs> all right? And uh, that's okay. Uh, so, so, I, I, had, I had fun. I had fun. Uh, Colby, sometimes, uh, as a parent, what I've learned is sometimes you have to let your children make mistakes so they can grow together. Uh, like I said live, you weren't there to catch it. I go, does Pat Sajak, is he the guy on camera one? No, he's not. Right. Say Jack, say Jack, I'm say no Jack. fucking talent, talent, right? and talent, I am, talent. I am not in charge of camera charge, one. Charge, right. charge, charge. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to give your normal experience for the TC <laughs> listeners tuning in. They might not be used I, to I hearing like audio bullshit. without crazy uh, mind yeah, crushing. Someone told me check I, the I, reverb. I was like, yo, <laughs> fuck the reverb. All right, was, I had a D3 school. Right? I do was, not give a shit about the reverb. It was here. probably yeah. not smart. I was trapped in the corner of, of our show, so I couldn't really escape and go check on the computer and the, the camera. Otherwise, I would have. But, yeah, that was that was a tough position for sure. Yeah. Well, it, it was all right. <laughs> don't, don't, everybody's overreacting. Yeah, well, the, the show was fun. Here's what I would <laughs> say. some dirt on it. You, there, you, uh, Colby, what, were, what I, were the guys? I, I, I felt worse than Filipowski. I needed to, to be carried out of there. What were the guys talking about behind our camera that picked up more than we did? I think he was talking about eating a girl's ass, but I'm not 100% sure. It, it, that is it, a it, disgusting it seemed like act. That. And I didn't know that. that thank, thankfully, because the, the, the camera that's, phone that's was set up. technically first the, base in the, Vegas. The audience, <laughs> <laughs> the audience alerted us to that. Obviously, I don't have I, – I couldn't hear that conversation. <laughs> but, but I, the, yeah. I think the uh, I think it's the intentional walk of Vegas. <laughs> well, you, have, you have some uh, real tastemakers in your uh, crowd. Yeah. Very cultured uh, group. They, they don't even have to uh, throw the four pitches anymore. They can just make a signal and right to the ass. Yeah. Uh, they don't even waste time. All right. Uh, speaking of that, hey, cut.com. Uh, imagine you're getting down on 32 first half unders. Do you want to be laying minus 110 on 32 bets? That's that's uh, 3.2 units. That eats up into your ROI. Get some of these first half bets listed on cut. I know 
our audience is all on the first half unders, but there's other users out there on cut who may not know the value and may want to take first half overs. I saw a couple of Benedicts uh, on, on X uh, talking about how they were going to get down on first half overs. Great opportunity to head over to cut. Not only do you get the 10% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGPN, but you can come up with your own custom bets. Even set your own lines for these first half uh, over-unders. Maybe there's some square people out there who don't realize you're shaving a half point here or there. Lots of opportunity, especially if you're going to be laying down a ton of action. The reduced juice of a betting exchange, a head-to-head, a ultimate put-your-money-where-your-mouth platform like Cut is, really uh, pays dividends. KUTT.com, promo code SGP. And, of course, Merch Madness, alive and well. I'm rocking the SGP camo hat. Love this thing. Uh, great for, uh, well, I don't actually use it to get any sort of camouflage. Out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a deer hunter, but uh, if I, you know. Uh, well, and the deers would probably be attracted to the sweet, sweet snapback hat. You never know when you're going to have to hunt deer. Exactly. You know? I'm ready to go. I might have to hunt for a meal here out in Las Vegas. Uh, promo code MADNESS, 15% off everything and get in on our uh, subscriber only march madness contest sports game podcast.com slash madness every show you're subscribed to on sgpn you get extra credits for the bankroll challenge thousand bucks winner take all two thousand if you're a patreon member and of course uh, congrats to juan sanchez uh, last week's patreon pick em winner he won a dgen university prize pack this week's prize hundred dollar circuit ticket any future you want, sportsgamepodcast.com slash Patreon. Kramer, let's get to it. All right. Uh, let's talk about some college basketball. I did for, uh, for support. I don't have a support animal, but I do have a support stack of uh, <laughs> March Madness tickets. We did make a there we go. trip down to the Circa to get some stuff in. I uh, got a lot of bets in. Uh, did not get the first half unders in yet. They're, they, per Jeff Benson, they're opening tomorrow morning. <laughs> did get to watch some of my digital horse uh, run a race while I was in the sports book, so it was a good time. So It's a very uh, funny photo if you want to look it up on Kramer's uh, X account. <laughs> There's just a wall of the, the literally the biggest sports book screens in the world, and Ryan's just huddled over a laptop watching his digital <laughs> horses run. I mean, first of Wait, all, so you did digital horses over over our our sound quality at this fine establishment. <laughs> no, the, the, the digital the digital horses were this morning. Were they were they were this morning? And yes, I, I probably right now I I think I would choose the digital horses over horses, over the three horses. That's horses. fair because I'm fair, still undefeated. Fair, fair. I I've yeah. sunk I've sunk a lot of money into this, Colby. A lot. I, I mean, I guess you could say I've sunk a lot of money into both things. All right, let's let's talk some college uh, basketball. March Madness. Uh, I think there must be some sort of deal with the uh, the Big Ten. They got to got to tee off. That we got to start uh, each morning with a nice Big Ten matchup. Just a couple of duds. Yeah. The nine seed, nine fifteen a.m. on the West Coast, Brooklyn, New York. We got Northwestern taking on Florida Atlantic, Boca to New York. That feels like a backwards migration. Minus two and a half for Florida Atlantic. Minus one fifty five on the money line. Northwestern plus one thirty. One forty two is. The total 67 first half under if I, if you, if you missed the start of the show, uh, they're one and one. And if you're uh, to the people who reached out to me today to ask me what this, uh, f- this March madness system that, <laughs> that they've heard about is you're just telling me you don't listen to the show. If you ask me what the system is, you're telling me you don't listen to the show. That's not very nice. Northwestern Florida Atlantic. I, I, this is probably you know uh, one of the better matchups between two premier guards in, in March. Florida Atlantic returns a lot of the same guys that we saw last year make the the Sweet 16, but this Northwestern team's pretty good, and I think Sean's going to talk about Boo Booey. But it, this this feels like the kind of morning game where we can have some moments to kickstart Friday. Colby, uh, I I would agree with that. I mean, I think this game has potential to be like the 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 best game potentially of the whole day. Um, and Florida Atlantic, we, I know we've talked a lot of trash. It doesn't make sense. Logical sense that uh, they would be ranked an eight seed, but at the same time, they are a good team and they do return a ton of production that were on that team a year ago, whether it's John L Davis, who I think is a very, very good college basketball player that will probably be playing pro somewhere. Uh, and then you have a Drago, their center who, who is a very decent player as well. Elijah Martin still there, Weatherspoon, you know, Greeley. Like, those guys are all key players that were on that team a year ago. Um, 
I did think they got misseated. And that's not a that's not a diss to FAU. I just feel like like I don't understand how they were higher ranked this year than last year, considering uh, they were in a lesser conference and they and they ran the table pretty much. Um, but I, I'm actually going to take FAU here. Like Northwest has been a great story. I do question the Big Ten. I don't know how good the Big Ten is. So I I do think Chris Collins is doing an unbelievable job at Northwestern, and I think he's he's like this is like one of the best coaching jobs in the country. It's not being talked about enough. But I just wonder, is it because the Big Ten is down that you're getting all these wins? And for that and the experience factor, I'm on Ivan Drago and FAU. I think if you can change, I can change. Everybody can change. And FAU could win the national championship this year. So I will lay the two and a half I'll with the ass. I'll take that action over on cut. <laughs> you realize uh, Rocky wasn't the Russian, right? <laughs> Rocky also lost that uh, first fight there. <laughs> what happened to Apollo Creed? He died. He died. Well, in the movie, from Ivan Drago <laughs> and in real life. In real life. Well, uh, Col- rest Colby's, in peace, by the way. Colby still swore Action he Jackson. was, was going to be. He was on our flight. Uh, we had that, Eli Manning on our flight out here. Did was, you talk about that? That was an all-time great moment. Colby just came up to me real quiet. He goes, uh, "That's Carl Weathers." I, rec- I, I recognize that no, no, voice no. everywhere. I said, anyway. "That's Carl Weathers," and he'll kick your ass. <laughs> I recognize right? that. <laughs> Recognize that voice anywhere, and they turn and just see a random black guy uh, waiting for his flight. He kind of, he kind of looked like Carl Weathers. Man. He did not look like Carl bad. Weathers. <laughs> bad mistake. I have on my notes: Boo Booey is a bad man, and I can see myself uh, already cracking some cocktails. Nine fifteen West Coast time. Just saying, Boo Booey. You gonna say that at the bar? I'll take a Boo Booey. Yeah, a little Boo Booey. See what they see what they concoct. Uh, that does, it does sound like a drink you would have in college. Like, uh, yeah, I'll take a Whiskey Rocks and uh, two Boo Booies for the ladies. I, I I, mean, he's amazing. He really elevates their play. Um, you know, Northwestern, their weakness in this matchup is the rebounding, but I think they can overcome it with their shooting. This should be a really close game. So it's going to be – if it's a close game, I'm going to take the two and a half points, and I'm going to take the team that's uh, noticeably better behind the arc and – from the free throw line, because all I think it's going to take the difference in this game is going to be a couple free throws and one or two, three pointers. I think Northwestern has that edge and they don't turn the ball over. So these, 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 these stats that are right on the margin, there, turnover percentage, only seventh in the nation, uh, offensively seventh best. So I think Northwestern plays a clean game, hits their threes, hits their, uh, free throws, and they get the uh, probably the outright win, but I'm taking the hmm. points. I just wonder who's going to guard Von Drago because you know I don't see any Balboas on this on this front court here. <laughs> funny, funny story yeah. about uh, Von Drago that Colby has mentioned. Like Vladimir Golden was a Russian wrestler growing up, hmm. and he outgrew the sport of wrestling into becoming a center in college basketball. Hmm. Hmm. That- BD- that's called BDE. <laughs> but wait, now was it was it uh it's called was steroids. It, was it real wrestling <laughs> or real me. wrestling? No. Which wrestling was it? <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Okay. All, all I uh, look, you're thinking steroids here. That was Rocky Four. I understand your connection there, but I've watched a lot of tape on, on Russian culture. <laughs> they happen to have a a nice agreement with bears. Oh, like they huskies, just they, right? they can be friends with they, like lots of grizzly bears or, so, or the brown guy, bears that yeah. just as a guy who worked on a clip show for five years, <laughs> uh, every fucked up, there's so many <laughs> fucked up shit happened in Russia. A uh, lot of dash cam videos, <laughs> a lot of them just lighting themselves on fire, drunk off vodka. But yes, Colby is right. They will just fuck around. With I saw bears. one in a cab. They yeah. got they got a fucking. It, it, uh, a it's br- like a it's like a Russian <laughs> prank of just like having a bear around. Uh, you know how we. Uh, w- <laughs> What was that? Uh, you know how we had that phase where you would ice your friends, where you just pull out a smear off. Russian people do that with like these massive bears, where they're just like, "Ah, oh, I bring my bear over." Wait, the icing was a phase. My friends and I still do that. I mean, it's an age phase. I think. Yeah. You, I think you have. Although I will, I will tell a fun Vegas story. I don't know story. where you can get. I, it's like, it's like can... Lincoln Logs. It goes away. An ex ex ex-girl, girlfriend of mine had an uncle that he. Uh, long story short, he won a scratch off lottery ticket. Uh, took that money, parlayed it into a condo in Vegas, where he then proceeded to have the name Diamond Jim because of his status at the casino. Uh, he mo- then moved back uh, within about a year and a half because he went broke. <laughs> 
But Diamond but Jim. But Diamond Jim for that year, God, Whoa. they should do a documentary on Diamond Jim for one year. Well, he was a 50. That's a hell of a movie title. He's, yeah, a, he's a 50-year-old man that still ices people. That, that was the point <laughs> of the story. So, uh, yeah, if you want to be like Diamond Jim, you never have to stop icing people. <laughs> Mac, Mac, what are you doing in this game? Uh, I'll be drinking boo booies with uh, oh. Sean on Friday morning. So let's go. Uh, that's got to be rum. I feel like that's yeah. rum and and oh, tonight. Island drink. Yeah, it's it's got to have. I feel like I it's a know. Halloween special though. I I, I think uh, everybody boo- thinks FAU is just going to turn it on. They're not the same team as last year. Last they year they were a top forty team in offense and defense. They're outside the top one hundred in defense. You know who's not the defense same team is last the big year? Big difference is is Northwestern. Northwestern always wins in the tournament. They, they, always, they, they overachieve. They, they have always two get wins one. in their history. How yeah, could you say are, that? Those are the last two times I'm they've been sorry, in the tournament. Buddy. But the, you can't the, say they always win. You see, like, they have two wins in their history of 150 years of hoops. Sean yeah. Trent. <laughs> Chris Collins is 4 0 ATS in the tournament. That's their yeah. coach. doesn't mean they win, they cover. They won the two first round matchups under Chris Collins. They're going to beat FAU. Get Let's this, go. Get this yes, Boca Raton sir. shit out of here. Yeah. Overrated. One hit wonder. This guy acts like they uh, got Bill Watton on the team <laughs> and uh, 74 Bruins. I, I, I'm completely rebuttaling this. Northwestern's 5-5. Five and five <laughs> against, Rebuttaling? <laughs> against Ken Pop top 50 teams here. All five of their wins were in the friendly confines of Welsh Ryan Arena. Colby, how many times have I mentioned this arena and how good of a home, home court advantage it is? At the co-wash. See yeah. you at the co-wash. <laughs> so they're 0-5 straight up against top 50 teams away from home. On the flip side, FAU, 4-0 against high major competition, not all on neutral floors in the non-conference. All four of those squads fall inside of Ken Palm's top seven. There's only one team that spent every Saturday getting a flying squirrel. Give me the and owls. That is why Kramer, you what are you doing? Take the owls. Like, we got all these experts. You're, you're fiddling with your uh, diving tanks. You're checking on your PSIs. It's just another game where the pace is going to dictate. And generally... <laughs> A team that's been there before. Maybe they got there last year. Maybe they won a game last year. And maybe they play with a uh, deliberately slow pace. I, the, I, I'm always going to take the slow pace team that knows what they want to do. Mm. And I think this whole concept that FAU coasted through the regular season and they're just going to turn it on. Mac used the, 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 the wise words. Uh, I am on Northwestern here, surprisingly. What happens if you won four games <laughs> oh, last tournament and you lost on a buzzer beater, though? What do you mean? Like, what, what Northwestern does that have to do with won four, one, and then FAU won four. Let's explain that. FAU won more in what one are you year about? than well, Northwestern's 130 years. Turn off both their mics. What are you talking about? You're both being nonsensical. Kramer, Colgate. For, for an entire chat, for, for a, a whole existence of how sharp you are. <laughs> nope. You nobody's, two idiots sound like... Uh, nobody's that? mentioned what, the what, health What are you issues? questioning? I'll answer. Any, anything you, you, you throw at me right now. What do you got? Oh, that you, you just you two sound like idiots arguing. How do about I a- sound like an idiot? FAU's got more success. Their play, their roster has won more games than Northwestern's won in 120 years. Also, of hoops. Northwestern has health issues. The Robin to Boo Booey's Batman is out for the year. Ty Berry and also Matt Nicholson, their big man, who's covering Vlad Golden. And might I add that he's been shitting on the Big Ten the entire time. Yeah, come on, hmm. come on, makes Brady. very logical Fade sense. the Big Ten. I'm the Big and, Ten guy. Fade and, the Big uh, Ten. You know, I thought we paid attention to teams that had tournament you know, success that are veterans. We've said this before over and over and over this season. Teams, especially since I would say COVID, at least since 2018, uh, teams with experience win in March, and they're the far more experienced team. Sure. But you came into this suggesting that they weren't the team they were last year. And so uh, for that reason, I'll, I'll take Northwestern. I'll take the toss-up. I'll take the good matchup. Let's go. And yeah, I'm gonna back Boo Booey over John L. Dave- Davis. In this show. You're gonna lose Boo Booey all day. You're gonna lose. Go. I, Col- round of drinks on me if I lose this. <laughs> Colgate. You're gonna be buying. No, let's go. Like Col- bat- like Patino. Let's go. Colgate. Well, Patino never <laughs> buys. Please. Colgate. Memphis, Tennessee. A little Patriot League action. Sean said this is not Lehigh. Yes. Nine forty a.m. on the West Coast in the West Region. Baylor, the three seed. Baylor laying fourteen here. Oh, minus 1100 on the money line. Colgate plus 700. 139 is the total. First half unders, if you're, if you're just turning in 66 for this game. I liked all three 14 seeds yesterday. But I'm just sitting on my fucking lawn chair on a boat that I own. 
while these <laughs> while this hired help is scrubbing barnacles off my fucking boat with their scuba gear. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Get you, personal. Uh, everyone that's not Mac in this room <laughs> oh, and Sean. <laughs> Thank you. S- Team Ryan for the win. There uh, you go. S- Baylor. Uh, although I will I will say this is maybe a 14 seed. I'm not going to like. Sean, Cole, I, Cole, I, Cole I warned Gabe. you about this in a previous show prior to March, didn't I not? Cole Team Gabe. Ryan. Oh Cole. yeah, they 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 gang up together. Colgate, and, and let's we'll, we'll go down a Noah path here. Colgate versus the Ken Palm top two hundred. <laughs> Trash. Their only wins versus Brown by two points, who's one eighty five, and Weber State one fifty four by two points. When when the fourteen seed has a Ken Palm ranking of one hundred twenty five or worse. The three seed is 14 and one straight up 10 and five ATS Colgate's 145. This Colgate team sucks. And I know they kicked Lehigh's ass. Thank you. This everyone. Thank you everyone for reminding me. I was there in my I was, jersey. I was on Lehigh too. That was brutal. I was there wearing my Jersey, watching them get the ever living shit kicked out of them. That doesn't make Colgate good. All right. <laughs> Don't confuse that with Colgate being a good team. You compare this to previous Colgate teams that also got their ass kicked in the tournament, and this one doesn't even stand up. If you had a Colgate on Colgate tournament, which no one would watch because Colgate sucks, um, they would. This Colgate team would get their ass kicked. Three seeds, sixteen and ten ATS when favored by more than twelve and a half points. Col- Colgate's just going to get their shit pushed in. So yeah, give me Baylor all day by a wide margin. Well, luckily. They're not playing Syracuse because they almost beat Syracuse in the in that filthy carrier dome. But I'm with you. Uh, athleticism is just on a different planet in this matchup. Uh, they did favors. The committee did favors to Baylor and Duke um, in in these in these scheduling spots. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like Keegan records. I like Colgate's program. I'm not going to bash it like Sean did. All right, I was on Lehigh and I got stupid. Colgate owns that conference. And I apologize to my mm. my clientele, um, but uh, Baylor is just—they're peaking at the right time. You got to remember, Baylor went out and used the portal, brother. Two or three guys, two or three guys that I think have been essential on this team. And you got to learn the rhythm. That's the new thing in college basketball. Ten years ago, seven years ago, five years ago, we probably really didn't have to key in on learning the rhythm of your roster. And Colby's a master of the rhythm method. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhythm. <laughs> Get uh, on up. It's bobsled time. <laughs> There we go. That's there actually a go. movie. Uh, cool Runnings. I yeah. know what you were talking about. It's actually a movie um, that I knew. Uh, how you've seen Cool Runnings, but not Dumb and Dumber. I don't fucking know. Fucking, <laughs> can we, we, we need to talk about that. Uh, no, but Baylor's just, they're just too athletic. Langston Love, game time decision. If I'm Scott Drew, I, I wouldn't even play him. I Lang- think you're going to handle business. Langston Love does sound, sound like an adult film star. <laughs> Like starring Jenna Jameson and Langston Love. No, it would be Longston Love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you. I think you. So you're on Baylor. I think you read. Yeah, Baylor all day. I think they're going to win by 20. Cocaine Bears with a uh, little key bump here to get the party started. Uh, Mac, what do you what do you like? Well, uh, what league is Baylor in? They're in the Big oh. 12, so we lay it. Uh, but I do think it'll be like last year against Santa Barbara. I think they struggle early because they are a little soft. They break it open, maybe some jump shots. They win by 18. See, I, I think Santa Barbara's way more athletic than Colgate. Is. I do so too, like, but the culture of Colgate can keep it somewhat close, and then the whites just peter out. Mm. Noah? I'll keep this one quick. Baylor Thank has a, a backcourt that is light years better. The <laughs> Bears also have the better rebounding team here, and the Baylor's better at the charity stripe, Sean. So this is going to be a route. I like his Ken Palm trend as well. So let's go. Baylor. Let's go. Kramer? Yeah, like I said, I like all the other 14 seeds. Um, this is not one of them. Uh, and, and I think just in general, like Colby kind of touched on it. This could be one of those, whoa, really, one team's, uh, the, the twi- we'll call it the twitchiness, right? <laughs> a little bit more twitchiness on the Baylor side of the ball. Uh, we'll lay the big number here. I, I, I don't think Colgate's going to keep this close. Although, strange uh, nugget, the Colgate did beat Vermont. That's their only tournament team win. But, on, on well, we'll get to it. But I think this Vermont team is also a bit fraudulent. I agree. Ooh, hot take. Well, that, I mean, that, compared that, wait, to wait, other Wait, that's Vermont. why I mentioned that. I said Duke and Baylor have been gifted. Yes, good point. Vermont good point. and Colgate is who I'm referring to, in, ca- in case anyone's not paying attention. Um, and really, that has nothing to do with, like, Vermont and Colgate do keep great programs. Our system. They got horrible draws. They should have got Big Ten draws. To me, it was the committee being very kind to Baylor and Duke. Our system lost more than ever this year, so trust us on this. Yeah. 
No, uh, the syst- yeah, the system of letting UVA in the tournament. Was that the system you're referring to? Eleven a or ten forty five a.m. on the West Coast. We're heading out to Spokane, Washington, where uh, you know we've we've driven through before. I think we stopped at a train car diner. If I, uh, I damn, that's crazy because I was actually talking about that diner. Tonight. If I if yeah. I recall, uh, UAB and San Diego State are in town for a twelve five matchup in the East. Pretty confusing that you play East regional games in Spokane, Washington. San Diego State laying seven this year. Remember, Sean, they were a five seed last year, uh, and they made it all the way to the championship, and then Decker's heart was broken. Oh, poor Decker. San Diego State laying seven, minus 280 on the money line. The, the Dragons, have they allowed them to bring the Dragon onto the court yet? Because that, that would uh, alter my handicap here for Birmingham. Plus 225 on the money line, 139 the total. First half under 65. Our gals were the first adopted collegiate team of this podcast. And it, it's always hard for me to, to, to look a different way. We have another, I feel like I can't remember a year because this is something I always notice, but the, the pace difference of these games, it seems like one after another, we're talking about a team, UAB, that wants to play fast and San Diego State that wants to do the opposite. So, Colby, what are we doing here? I, I mean, I think you have to ride UAB. Hmm. Uh, they can match them athletically. Now, San Diego State is a much better defensive team, but do I remind you that San Diego State uh, has a knack? They're kind of like UVA, uh, where they can't score. They play elite defense. You look at last year's first round. They they barely got by Charleston. The previous four first rounds, they had uh, lost all of them, like in close games for the most part, with the exception of the Syracuse game in 21. Um this is a team that when you step outside of the Mountain West, is what you, you want to talk about a Mountain West team to me that benefits from knowing their opponent. It's San Diego State. San Diego State is one, like, yes, they're a great team. They went to the national championship a year ago. They deserve that credit. But they're a team that, to me, when you, when you go, when you can match them athletically, it doesn't matter who you are. It's going to be a close game. San Diego State has a, they want to bring you into a close game. Seven's that, a lot for this San that's Diego what I'm State saying. team. That's what I'm saying. They want to bring you into a close game. They might win this game by one, by two, but I certainly feel very good about UAB and Andy Kennedy, who I think is a very good coach, and I've said this all year long and in previous years. UAB, when the spotlight's on them, they always show up. They always show up. And to me, that when you can match them athletically, I think they can stay within this number. San Diego State might win this game. I don't think it's a crazy play to take that 225 on UAB money line especially considering how many close games San Diego State won last year. Yeah, this does feel like a one-possession game. UAB very good at offensive rebounding percentage, 22nd in the nation, a little bit better at the free throw line. But, yeah, I mean, San Diego State, to, to win by seven against this quality of UAB team, the, I guess the concern is UAB got in because they won the American, and they got matched up. Uh, against a Temple team that may or may not be uh, intentionally UAB losing has the guys, game. though. You watch it. Gaines, the guard, is a ball player. Vasquez is a ball oh. player. The forward, Lind- Lindenborg, is a fucking stud, man. Like yeah, it's so. not. It's not like they they lack talent. That's what I'm saying. Like the AAC has been undervalued. Clearly, you know, with 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 that with this line, in my opinion, and with some some of the other judgment that I that I've seen, you know, with the selection committee, I I think UAB is a very good team. How about this? Houston went to the Big 12, won the Big 12. They were in the, AC, the AAC last year. Yeah. UAB's a very good team, and they've been I, I, disrespected I'm, for a I'm while. With you. Seven yeah. is just yeah. too much for San Diego State. Even though I like this San Diego State team, I'll be rooting for our gals to a certain degree, but, uh, yeah, it's a lot. Kramer, and, what are you doing? And I'm aware UAB was in the CUSA, but they jumped to the AAC. My point is night in, night out, going through it, it's a better conference than public perception. Uh, yeah, I guess the one thing I would point out uh, – while they do play a lot of juniors and like elder statesmen, they don't have a ton of experience. And so when you look at the experience metric Kempom uses, San Diego State looks to have a major advantage there. And a lot of that is what you just threw in my face with Florida Atlantic in terms of all this experience this team comes with. So, uh, like I said, first adopted team of this program, understanding that it's going to be a disgusting game. But, uh, you know, if there is a way that San Diego State rolls. I think they're able to exploit the inside and their size advantage, maybe. Can I bring up the fact that last season's uh, magical run, if you took away the UConn game where they lost by 17, even though we know that was closer, they had that down to like five or six at like the six-minute mark. Uh, Six 
uh, I'm sorry, yeah, five, four of their five wins before the national championship were by seven points or, or by all less than seven points. That's so, a good, that's so, a good yeah. nugget. Yeah. So they're due. So, yeah. Kramer, I, I, I'm with you. I'm not benedicting on our angle nice. of experience in the Final Four. Uh, San Diego State is 12-0 and 0 straight up and 10-2 and against the spread against teams outside of Ken Palm's top 100 this season. I think the Aztecs have the best player on the floor in Jane Ledee, and San Diego State has the much better defense. Give me the Aztecs. Let's go, Mac. I don't care what Ken Palm says. Uh, <laughs> San, San Diego State gives me Virginia vibes. They overachieved yeah. last year. No, they're very similar. They got they every bring bounce. you into the muck. Yes, they bring you into the muck, and they want to win by two. That's why it's a dumb bet to ever lay points at San Diego State. They want that. They, they, they don't blow it. Their model is not to blow you out by thirty. Their model is to win by four and make you suffer and shoot a horrible percentage all game. I'm going to be rooting for Colby yeah. to be laying down the greatest, uh, the greatest mixed track of him saying bad takes on college basketball. We're on the opposite <laughs> side of a lot of stuff, Colby. Uh, Matt, continue your point on why I'm wrong. Well, and last year, San, or, uh, UAB was a hype team in Conference USA. Florida Atlantic goes on the run. It's a year after the year. Ooh. UAB, Andy Kennedy, he's been there, yeah. done that. Last time he went on the run, 2012, Ole Miss upset 12-5 over Wisconsin. Mm. This guy can coach. This guy knows how to win in March. I, I don't trust San Diego State this year. I think they were overseeded based off of what they did last year. The rest of the Mountain West underseeded. Give me UAB outright. It fits Colby's narrative, so Colby's not going to press Mac, but Mac is a very, very, very big well, like, Andy Kennedy guy. All right. so. But, but <laughs> San Diego State handicap lo handicap losing Kashad Johnson to Arizona oh. was a gigantic blow. He was a, he was a, a Jaden Ledee might be better. Last point, not depth wise. Yeah. UAB five and zero ATS on neutral court. Kramer, all right, I'm I'm still laying the points because I don't just send my child off for adoption because the the tides turned a little bit. Our gal, San <laughs> Easy Diego to see State, a tide turn. <laughs> roll minus seven. Western Kentucky, the 15 seed in the South, 11 a.m. on the West Coast. We're heading to Indy, a place that claims the basketball is super important to them. They're uh, hosting Marquette. The two seed out of the South. So we got a little Western Kentucky Mar Marquette uh, matchup, which is interestingly small spread, 14 and a half, minus 1450. They're pretty interesting there. The spread and the money line kind of have some symmetry. Western Kentucky plus 850. 158 and a half is the total 76 first half under. You see how, uh, how much pace potentially they expect to, to be in this game with that first half total. I, I've been told that uh, Tyler Kolick is playing. Is that a, is that accurate statement? So, uh, I believe so. I think okay. that, that that's going to be factual. Which, which matters for Marquette. I don't think he's going to be one hundred percent. The oblique injuries are usually pretty tricky. From my experience, uh, oblique injuries uh, are the worst. Uh, it usually keeps me off the court for uh, one to one to two one weeks. to five years, <laughs> or one to five years. Uh, also, Sean, I, I wanted to bring this up because I know you're a big Purdue guy. But I wanted to make sure that you understood that the head coach of Western Kentucky is a Matt Painter disciple. Oh, okay. Who possesses a 58 and 34 ATS record in the last three years. Love that. And I'll say this Hilltoppers, fastest adjusted tempo in all of basketball. So I don't think they're going to be shocked by Marquette's tempo. And if you're looking for an upset here, Western Kentucky, five out of the seven 15 seeds had a Ken Palm ranking of 130 or better includes Princeton last year uh, in 2023, Western Kentucky, just outside, just outside that 130 at 132. So maybe not the outright victory, but I think because styles make fights, Western Kentucky can hang with the uh, pace. If we're getting Colick in there, now, I know they haven't really played a team as good as Marquette this season, but I, I'm still going to take Western Kentucky in the points. I don't know how live of a dog they are, but this, it, I, I think they're going to be able to hang around. Colby, what are you doing? Well, I mean, Western Kentucky, uh, you know, well, first off, <clears throat> I do think we should highlight that Colick hasn't played in a couple of weeks because even though we know he's a stud, and he is a stud, he's one of the better players in college basketball, I do believe there is a rhythm that's lost to that. You know what I mean? Like, you just quickly yeah. throw him in, um, and then you add in the fact that, to me, the tops, uh, the tops, Steve Lutz has done a great job in year one. He's familiar with Marquette. He was at Creighton as an assistant, and you don't have to look that far back. I mean, this, this Western Kentucky program, 
has been a winning program for a long time. And that I buy into the culture that they sell there, and I just think they can stay within that number. It doesn't mean that I think they're going to win out right, but to me, they're talented enough to stay within that number, especially knowing Kolek comes back. And here's another thing. Is do we know... Do we even know if Kolik is going to get major minutes? Like, what if he comes? Like, there's a little bit of a of an unknown here. Like, he hasn't played in forever. You show up. What, yeah. if, what if you struggle a tiny bit? Then your best player is still out against the Western Kentucky team that I think is undervalued, and it's been undervalued all year, really. I I think that Steve Lutz has done a great job. I was on them to win the CUSA, and I thought it was ridiculous that the, the their odds that they had considering they're, they're this good of a program and, and this guy's a winning coach and you're quickly seeing what he can do. This is his first year. 22-11 and 11 at Western Kentucky is a great first season. And they they spend money. Like, this is, a, this is a, a, a group of five that actually spends money on their roster. I will take Western Kentucky to cover this number. Noah? Uh, this one was a tough one for me to pick. Uh, without a 100% healthy Colic, I feel like this spread is just a tad bit wide. And the cocktail napkin agrees with me mm. as the tops plus 12 and a half here. I think the Golden Eagles can force their fair share of turnovers and win this game, but it's tough to lay this many points without their starting point guard. Uh, and they've struggled uh, down the stretch without him. I'll take the tops. Mac? This is going to be the 215 game that comes down the wire. What mm -hmm. a, I mean, what other two seed? Arizona, Iowa State, um, I, I, I think I think Marquette's the most vulnerable. Yes. And I know everybody wants to say, oh, they're getting cold tops, back tops, and they're going to fucking tops. roll. How many times did we see a guy, they try to ease him in and it takes a game. Yeah. This is the game where they're going to struggle. And I think Western Kentucky's live. I really uh, do. I do too. And Florida I mean, gets Marquette in round two. Look, look, I mean, take a look at this. I mean, they beat UCLA just by two points out the beginning yeah. of the year. St. Thomas by five in the Summit League. Yep. I think, you know, without Tyler Kolick or, you know, with him healthy, it's still... A big question mark. How well, how healthy is he, and how how many minutes will he get? And meanwhile, you have the tops, like I said, who we knew, we knew this last year and the years prior. Rick Stansberry was failing with a roster that was super talented, way more talented than your normal group of five, uh, or mid major, whatever you want to say. I know it's group of five is a football term, but in mid major form, Western Kentucky spends, and they have more talent than a lot of teams. And Shaka, that's yeah. a big favorite. Yeah, Sh Texas, Shaka and Abilene yeah. Christian. Yeah. Three fourteen. I was uh, Kramer. What are you doing? I was digging up some old notes uh, from last year when I was doing the prep, and Shaka as a favorite is a massive fade job. So yes, one hundred percent. Taking a guy who we love to fade, who has a bad historical ATS record as a big favorite, combining that with a coach who has a an incredible record as a head coach. Again, fifty eight and thirty four. That's three seasons. And, and, and we don't highlight it. Uh, maybe I didn't talk about that enough. This is year one. So as the year pro progresses, they understand his picture of what he wants to do offensively, what he wants to do defensively. If you're quoting stats from November, December, January, I find a lot of those ones useless because you're, 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 you're basically implementing your style of what you want. The, yeah. The, Three straight NCAA yeah. tournament appearances, two with Corpus Christi, and now this yeah. year with Western Kentucky. I'm, yeah. I'm taking the points, but I will say, when you have two teams that like to play fast and a spread that's only 14 and a half, it can – pretty quickly stretch it out but I, I am on the the hilltoppers or the toppers or whatever go tops, go tops. What, whatever the tops. hipsters are calling them these yeah. days stetson what, can, when we profile in the bottoms ryan what do you mean uh that's <laughs> well if you have tops you need bottoms tonight after the lights go off <laughs> stetson connecticut 116 matchup 11 45 a.m in brooklyn new york home game for uconn as uh, hurley mentioned they don't even have to get on a plane they're just going to ride a bus around. It does sound fun. Connecticut laying 26 and a half, minus 8,000 on the money line. Uh, I think Fezzik priced this at minus 9,600, if you're Good curious. Value. Stetson plus 2,200. 45, 145 and a half is the total. 71 first half under. I, I don't think we need to spend much time on this one. Nope. Stetson is so, so another, so seven, ten, or 10 seed playing games this year, new. Also new, and maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but typically the top overall seed gets to play in 16s because they're bad. You want to force them to play an extra game. Stetson is so bad that they said, we don't need any of that. Stetson, you got UConn in the first game. <laughs> I know that Stetson has a little bit of size, but this just seems like one of those situations. Sean and I played in a rec league in North Hollywood that had no, a lot of people play in rec leagues. They have limit, they have levels and you, let's say a ladder system. So everyone's competitive. 
we played in a free, like no, no rules kind of thing. And they, there were guys there that were coaching, like they had scouted teams. And uh, I feel guys, like this game could look on Justin Decker. I, we, not that we were ever five, as, seven, Justin Decker, not that we were dunked on, not that we were ever as good as Stetson, <laughs> but, uh, the, the teams we were playing were, were pretty oh, good. I also got dunked on. Uh, it, it was a fun league. I mean, I, I think we mostly got our ass kicked. I did have a game where I got hot in the first half and maybe we had like five, three pointers. <laughs> we, we did have a couple of moments when we were, uh, randomly competitive that may or may not been the one where my dad filled in. Uh, and and tried to league. play in dress shoes and Different got league. yelled at by the ref. Although he did play with a Lutz in that league. So. Yes. Uh, for me, this is pretty simple. I mean, Stetson barely eked out a victory over Austin P. Uh, Connecticut number one offense in uh, offensive efficiency. Uh, Stetson three hundred and forty second in defensive efficiency. And this trend says it all. Uh, if the number one seed is four, the number one seed is fourteen and five ATS. If the team is outside of Ken Palm's two hundred, uh, Stetson's two eighteen. So this is is this is a grab a drink game. Uh, you know, make sure your food situation. Uh, change out your dip cup. Uh, this is this is one of those games. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think long term you want to do that. Now, the bet detective, uh, we dropped a show oh, earlier no. today. A shout out to the great CJ Sullivan. Subscribe <laughs> to the bottom line bombs. He's on the case. No, he thinks the first half Stetson can cover this thing. He said you jump in in the first half. Ooh, okay. You take UConn for the game. You take both. You win all of them. So, Get a little cute. Uh, I, I, you know, I kind of buy into it. I'd like Stetson's not that. I will say this about Stetson. I think they're better than the traditional 16. Now, unfortunately, UConn's better than the traditional one. So, uh,. I, I'm with you, Faden. You cut in the points for the game, but I got to give the bet detective a, a shout out for the uh, for the strong, the strong, strong ass offer. Yes, the strong ass offer in the first half. Mac, what are you doing? Oh, I'm on the points. I, I, I everybody remembers UConn last year. They were flew under the radar. The target is square on their fucking back this year. They've talked about oh, it's nothing if we don't go good too. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens. They flew under the radar last year. You look at Stetson too. They Almost beat Cincinnati. They beat UCF. It got away from them late against Houston. Give me the points. I, I like your theory as a big picture. I don't know if it applies to Stetson. You said they have a target on their back. What what kind of gun does Stetson have? Are they sitting there with a little pea shooter? Hey, I, I just, James, Ray, Ray Finkel <laughs> and, uh, uh, from Stetson University. James Blackman, 43 points in the title game. Well, so that was against good. Austin P. Kind of different. Hey, kind of, don't don't, don't shit on Austin hey, He used P. to work That's for Austin P. That's his guy. That's his, guy. That's <laughs> his program. I, 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 I had, maybe you cut shit out maybe of I'm <laughs> angry because I had Austin P. Plus 950 uh, <laughs> as a future. Noah? Yeah, I was with you on the on the Gov. Plus 950 there, too. That was a good price. Uh, I respect the the uh, bet detective. However, I, I, I view this game a little bit differently than, I, than him. I think Stetson slips through the back door. I think UConn's going to take this game a little bit less seriously. Stetson has performed really well over good competition Dude, so far this year. They're better than a year. normal 16. They are. They, they are. It's just they got UConn. So man. the one, the one, the money line? The one yeah. comparable opponent to UConn, Houston, they got drilled by them. However, they beat UCF and they covered this number against Cincinnati. Those are two other high major programs that did get bumped up into the Big 12, and they competed, right, Max? So I think UConn plays with their food a little bit here, and I think the Hatters cover. I mean, I do. Like, everyone's talking about how UConn's pissed about or, or UConn fans are pissed about their region, and and I agree. They How should can be. you be pissed on about, about this region? Brooklyn, Boston, no, and then no, you go I'm to talking Phoenix. about the teams in the region. The okay. Teams in the region, but I'm saying, I even think they could stretch their argument to get Stetson in the first round because they should be a 15. They should be a 15. Uh, so in my shallow prep, where I just look at the team's colors, I did come across some interesting nuggets about what coach, uh, and I'm blanking on his name. Is it Donnie? Donnie Jones, uh, he likes to play some unique zone defenses that maybe UConn hasn't seen all year, and maybe that gives them a little bit of an edge, and maybe this is a great stage for some of that stuff to come roll out. So we all know the number converges to Ken Palm. He likes this at 23. My number is at 22.8. I'll take the point, Sean. What? <laughs> little head fake. Let's go, baby. 11-6 wow. matchup. In You're Mem just copying Mac. 
What do you mean? Stetson so money. It's a Ryan thing. Stet, Matt, Stetson money line. Let's go. <laughs> Ale- uh, Purdue was number oh one boy. overall last year. They fucking went That's down. That's true. Right? Were they, they weren't number one Purdue. overall. Yeah, they were. Purdue? Number Purdue. one overall? No, I don't think so. I think they're they were. Yes, I thought they, they, were. they were the fourth number one. All right. Anyway, 22 he's to not, one. He's always sticking up. I don't think they're, I mean, they weren't fourth. They were number they were certainly one. Certainly not fourth. They, they were, were number one, two. one overall. They were one or two. We're, we're sure. gonna pause. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the show just to explain for the young people out there what what just happened. Alabama is, is, was number one overall. What just happened right well, now that is was number two. Ta- see, it's still happening. This time is never coming back. <laughs> it it well, the time someone put it in like a toilet, hit the flush, and it's like going. You're watching it go down. It's eventually gonna go down, but it's Shot still clock happening. Shot violation. Uh, New Mexico, Clemson, eleven-six matchup in the West Region. Memphis, Tennessee, probably gives Clemson a slight edge, although I, I don't know how big that matters. Twelve ten on the West Coast. New Mexico, the Lobos, minus two. Wow, minus one thirty-five on the money line. Clemson plus one fifteen. One fifty-one and a half is the total. Seventy-two and a half first half under. Colby, we love the Mountain West. We love this New Mexico team. This might feel like the, the Mountain West team we need, now need to fade with what the number has done. And they also, if we're going to count, if we're going to be Mountain West guys and say they're major conference, we got we to gotta abide by the commandment and say we're going to fade a major conference winner. So what are we doing with New Mexico, Colby? I like what you're doing there. I, I do. I do. The problem is they're but, playing Clemson, who's more concerned about a lawsuit against the a, the ACC oh, yeah. right now. And, I mean, do I need to look back? Hmm, Clemson. Uh, Brad Brownell. How's he doing? Clemson. Let me say, I, I'd say 2011, they made it to the second round. 18, 18, they did all right. That was like their golden year. But for the most part, since 1998, they lose in the first round. Actually, five out of those seven times they made the NCAA tournament, they lose in the first round because Clemson's a football school. They put football first. They don't pay through the church, as far as I know, in basketball. And uh, as much as I like them, P.J. Hall, Joe Girard, all those guys that, that are good college basketball players, they do lack athleticism. New Mexico, coached by uh, Rick Pitino's son, Richard Pitino, no, oh, see it. What do they see. got? They, what they, they went out and got athleticism. Whether it was JT Toppin, look at that NBA pedigree. Whether it's Toppin, whether it's Jamal Mashburn Jr., whether it's Jalen House, the son of Eddie House, who scored sixty-two points in a game at Arizona State. Ain't no stop. Yeah, I just can't fade New Mexico right now. New Mexico's playing elite basketball. Uh, the ACC has been trash all year. We saw it tonight with with Virginia, and I I think New Mexico is just they they have guards. When I, what, what, when I think about the strengths of Clemson, and I try to say Gerard, Gerard is a good player. He's going to have to guard. Yeah. He's going to have to guard. And I don't know if he's, if he's a, good enough to guard the athleticism of the, Nebra, uh, of the Nebraska, of the uh, New Mexico guards. I just think I can't fade the way New Mexico is playing right now. I understand they won the conference championship, and I understand the logic that it's a good fade. But I also feel like the committee did them a favor by saying – they didn't belong in if they didn't win. I think that pisses off New Mexico. Sean, he's like, chip he's like a shoulder. politician. Yeah. Every chance to get up on that podium and talk yeah. about the committee. Well, he has his court. No new taxes. He has his court. <laughs> he has his court tenants. Uh, he <laughs> believes fish and people can coexist together. <laughs> he, he, now Clemson does have this going for it. They're amazing at the free throw line, and I hate that I'm fading them here. Um, <laughs> and your your major conference, if we're counting the Mountain West, those are two things they have going for them. What they don't have going for them is 69th in adjusted uh, or in defensive efficiency. To me, that's the only unit in this game that's outside of Ken Palm's top 40, almost 70th. And it's Clemson defense not being as good as previous years, I think, is a real thing. New Mexico brings the heat. The heat is in the hat anywhere they go. 8-0 ATS on the neutral court. And coming back to, I think I got this right this time, when the 11 seed is favored, <laughs> the 6 seed is 1-6 and six straight up, 1-6 and six ATS. Book it, Lobos. Mac? We're going to build a wall around New Mexico. <laughs> All right? And they're going to get it done. Oh, you guys know where I'm going. I have been telling everybody in the country the Mountain West is light years better than the ACC. Did you see the game tonight? <laughs> Who are you pointing to? I, 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 I pointed point the camera. Oh, okay. camera right there. I thought you were pissed right off. There. I thought we had a Tiger fan out there. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Fuck, it. fuck the ACC. There are a couple hundred Tiger fans probably watching this New stream. Mexi- <laughs> New Mexico, way better than Clemson. They got guards. They didn't even have one of their guards playing in the, in the conference championship game. 
Denton had the flu. They got House. They got Mashburn. And I don't know if you noticed, not only Richard Pitino, Rick Pitino was complaining about New Mexico's seed. It's personal. Like New a Mexico, good father blowout. to their son. Blowout. All right. <laughs> Noah? <laughs> blowout. Yeah, King, Mac had his moment where he was pointing at the camera. I'm going to have my moment at the camera. Ooh. Oh, Beanick. Don't doubt me on my bracket knowledge. Alabama, number one overall seed last year. Houston, number uh, two overall. Uh, Kansas, number three. And who uh, was number four? Purdue was number four woo, overall, woo, woo, woo. number one oh seed. A lot of my handicap is How what Sean said. Thank you. Ste uh, so there has been 11 instances where the 11 seed has been favored over the six seed. I grabbed this stat from Jason Lisk of Team Rankings. He got it from me. <laughs> Those 11 <laughs> seeds are 10 and 1 straight up. Against six seeds Do and have nine have won by double digits. So not only covering, they are smashing this spread. And secondly, a lot of people are fading the Mountain West this year. A lot of the haters are saying that their home environments are so electric that it hurts them in these neutral court settings. <laughs> I love but, that logic. Like but, Boston College, Boston like, College is thriving with their MTS crowd. But like anyway. they are undefeated straight up this year on neutral courts, and they're one of three teams that are that have that kind of record. Illinois five and zero undefeated neutral court. UConn six and zero. New Mexico is eight and zero. Lock up the Lobos. Let's go. Boston College I, I, did beat Providence uh, in the NIT tonight, Colby. I, I did, yeah. They, I thought well, you knew Paul. It's true, but I'm, and I was on Boston College, but <laughs> uh, you caught that video last time we put out. Oh yeah, I did see someone basically what Noah just said, like, hey, once the Mountain West gets out of their high air and altitude, they're not so tough anymore. And it's like, do you understand? Like, that's the whole reason why like marathoners train at high. We literally altitude. have <laughs> Olympic training centers in Colorado Springs. <laughs> you, you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Come on. I'm. I was never gonna fade a Mountain West team against Clemson. We all hate Clemson. That's why we know we're gonna get screwed here. We respect Clemson baseball, though. Hey, you don't want to get screwed when you're getting game tickets. That's right. You got to go to GameTime.co or download the GameTime app. Use the promo code SGPN twenty dollars off your first order, and you got the GameTime guarantee which means uh, if you can find a uh, lower a uh, ticket in the same row same section they'll refund you 110 percent they're never gonna do that you know why because you can't beat them if you can't beat them join them i joined game time uh it was a great experience super easy hooked it up tickets come right to the phone you see you you actually get to see the views durant joined the warriors remember that yes that's, 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 he, that's pretty much that's that's what he's doing with game time there you know what i mean Sorry, I I'm totally saying you can't beat him. Join him. You oh, gotta, you right. gotta, you can't gotta fucking him. hop on board. Join him. Yeah. Yes. So the, you are joining the juggernaut, and they are one of the they are one of the ticket uh, fastest growing ticket companies. Like for a good <laughs> reason, Colby. They are putting together a ticket company dynasty, much like the Warriors, seventy two and eight, or whatever the hell they were, uh, seventy three <laughs> and nine, seventy two and ten. There you go, eighty two games. Uh, but and you can you can check out all eighty two at a great price over at GameTime.co. Promo code SGPN. Kramer. All right, let's. Uh, I'm stretched now, so we're gonna we're gonna start uh, striding out here. 115 on the Speed West Coast, up. Spokane or Spokane, depending on uh, which part of the state you're from. From Washington, we're in the West region, which makes a lot more sense to be playing in Spokane. 13-4 matchup here, Yale versus Auburn, which you know, first real puzzled uh, look I gave at the bracket was how is Auburn a four seed? What are we doing here? Auburn laying 13. They're on my Ken Palm contenders list, Sean. Minus 850 on the money line. Yale plus 575. They should have lost to the Brown Bears. Uh, speaking of Bears, I think these aren't the kind that plays with Russians, though. Yale total 141, uh, 141 and uh, first half under 67. Just from watching a little bit of the Ivy League, it does seem like Yale requires a little bit of dribble movement with the ball, and I got to imagine that's going to be difficult for these Ivy League private school pussies to do against Auburn. I don't care if they're in the jungle or not. In fact, the eastern part of the state of Washington is actually quite dry relative to the western part of the state that has rainforests. Neither parts have uh, tigers, though. Auburn, I'm laying the points. Colby, what are you doing? Uh, no, I'll take the points. Uh, look, get, getting Bruce Pearl in the NCAA tournament, first off, that, that, that's normally a good, a good thing. Um, also, just the fact that it's in Spokane, 
Uh, Auburn fans Smash. don't know. Auburn fans don't know. They think Spokane is in a different country. Uh, Might and, be true. and shout out to Frank. It's, uh, it's a dip. <laughs> it, it neutralizes uh, that super passionate fan base. Can I get a tin of yeah. wintergreen uh, Spokane? Uh, and, and Frank's Diner was where we were at with the train nice. car. Oh, by the way. Then no wonder why they didn't put, put Patino in uh, Spokane. Uh, but no, uh, you look back at <laughs> the Yale. dining cars are rocking. Don't go and knock it. <laughs> Yeah, look at what Yale did. They, they've they actually been to Spokane this year. They played Gonzaga there. They lost by 15. Uh, they also lost by 15 in Lawrence, Kansas. That's perfect. You know, that that's they've been up against top-notch competition. I think this Yale team is better than what people think. I understand they didn't play the greatest game against Brown, but they've been a good team all year, and I think they, they, they much like Princeton last year, we saw what Princeton did. They went to the Sweet 16. I, I think they can stay within this number, and I actually think they might even be able to give some challenges to Auburn that Auburn hasn't seen because the SEC, for the most part, you know, you're dealing with great athletes and just high tempo stuff with like Bama and LSU, and everyone runs there with the exception. Yeah, they, there's an A and M or something there, but I think Yale might be able to give them some challenges they're not used to. Yeah, for me, I got some conflicting things here because Auburn, nice free throw bump, top 10 in adjusted offense and defense. So if you look at like contenders list, they're, they're right up there in the mix. Uh, this trend is a little concerning. Number four seeds, when the spread gets this big, they do have trouble covering. Uh, when the number four is favored by 10 or more points, they're, uh, the, they're 19 and two straight up, but only six. 14 and one ATS. So they, the, the four seeds win, but they struggle to get that cover against the 13. But on the other side, Yale, I mean, they haven't looked great in their last two uh, NCAA tournament appearances, including a loss uh, to Purdue by 22 points. The free throws is what uh, does it for me. Ultimately, you think Yale, Oh, Hey, bunch of nerds who haven't seen the sun in a long time. <laughs> They're going to be great at hitting free throws. Not so fast. 70.7% at the line compared to the Auburn Tigers, 75.2. That's the deciding factor for me. Give me Auburn laying the big number. Mac. Um, you know, I love Auburn. I think Auburn's going to beat UConn in the Sweet 16, but I love Yale here. Mm. I think Yale keeps it close. Auburn gets by just like they did in 2019. They beat New Mexico State. They get the momentum. It's a sleepy spot off the SEC title game. Get by, mm. and they roll the rest you, of the time. You're a real sandbag and son of a bitch for bringing up that New Mexico State game. Yeah. Remember, I had a ticket on New Mexico State. Noah? They missed three free throws. Isn't this an SGPN March Madness commandment? Why are we fading this? Uh, Auburn just coming off the SEC tournament title. Oh, you're right. Uh, I think Yale can slow this game down tempo-wise, and they have good size athleticism. They take care of the ball. Bulldogs front court, very good. Danny Wolf probably going to transfer at the end of the season. So he might be counting his chickens before he hatches, but he's a high major player. And Matt Noling had been battling a little bit of an injury bug throughout the season, but he last year was their best player. Yale was the best team in the Ivy League. They got upset in that championship game against Princeton. And Princeton goes to the Sweet 16, like Colby mentions. Uh, I think that Tigers, I think that Yale Bulldogs front court is going to make uh, or going to keep the Tigers front court from going nuclear here and make the Auburn young guards beat them. Ultimately, I do think that Auburn skates by here, but I think the Bulldogs keep this one close. It's going to be like watching Sean uh, try to stay in front of one of those kids in that rec league game. <laughs> a little get, get nice out a little too far from the basket. I, I do want to maybe nominate we're set. potential greenie uh, Danny Wolf. Maybe can we? I, I looked at a picture of him. We take his hair off. He looks just like one of those uh, uh, unnamed. And, un and I'll, I'll go ahead and say, like you said, potential. He's going to transfer. He. This is his audition. Auburn. Oh yeah, Auburn for sure. just buys everybody. Auburn sitting Ooh. there saying, "Who? What do we got here? This is a great spot for Danny Wolf to uh, be hungry like yeah. a wolf." Quote Duran Duran. Let's good, go. Good luck. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm. Not, it's so rare for me to want to take the, uh, the the lower seed to control the pace of a game. Sorry, Auburn, lay the points. All right, the next game in the rotation, one thirty on the West Coast, Indy. It's the Colorado Boise State winner versus Florida. So we'll skip that one from now. Ten South, the ten seven in the South. Uh, then we jump the gap uh, to the afternoon slates, 3.50 p.m. on the West Coast. Memphis, Tennessee, we have a big-time matchup here. The nine seed out of the South Texas A&M and Buzz. Well, all those moments, uh, all those years since I took that picture on the campus of Texas A&M, I plan on posting my picture that I took that weekend. So stay tuned oh, at Kramer-centric. 
Uh, we got Texas A&M, Nebraska, the eight seed. Nebraska laying a point, minus 115 on the money line. Texas A&M, minus 105. 147 and a half is the total. First half under 69 and a half. Uh, much has been made about how Texas A&M just dropped the bag for Nebraska's AD, and this is some sort of massive revenge spot, and the committee's in on it because not cool. only are the men playing in the men's tournament, but the women are also playing in the women's tournament somehow. Uh, all of that being said... It's not a commandment, but I always say be wary of the team that relies on offensive rebounding exclusively for their offense. I understand that Texas A&M is going to have a twitch advantage in this one, but Nebraska is the classic March Madness team. They got a bunch of sharpshooters. They're going to look fun. They're going to be exciting. It's going to suck if they lose to a grinded out Buzz Williams team here, but I'm going to lay the points with Nebraska. Colby, what are we doing here? That's two Big Ten teams for the record. Colby, what are we And I'm fading my, my guy Buzz so he can get fired and come back home. Colby, what are we doing? No, I'm all over A&M here. I think Nebraska, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the Big, the Big Ten's been ass all year. Nebraska's been getting by. Look, it's been a fun story. I like to see Nebraska get Colby, good. Colby, what's the uh, name of the Japanese kid who's really good at shooting? Casey Tomonaga. Thanks, uh, Colby. <laughs> Lynn Sanity. Uh, yeah, Lynn Sanity 2.0, but I, I love this matchup for A&M. Like I said, I, I don't think the Big Ten was very good. I think they're living by off their rep and, uh, and their rep from 30 years ago. Um, but, uh, no, A&M is playing at a higher level to end the season. Uh, I think they're more physical. I don't know physical. about that. I mean, this, this, Nebra 20, maybe. this Nebraska yeah. team. Beat Kentucky twice. To me, like, Nebraska hasn't hasn't touched anything like that. I know they got Purdue, but Purdue I mean, they Purdue should they should have beat Illinois. They were up big against Illinois. They slowly let that uh, fade away. But I, I think they, they're fired up. I think this... I think this Nebraska team is a decent, uh, well-rounded team. Pretty good at the They're free throw a line. They're team, though, man. And to me, like, that's a great way to take buzz. The buzz saw is, like, I think he looks for, like, oh, we get a finesse team. We're going to fuck you up, man. They're going to get I – know, I, know, I know, you know, like, it's the SEC and Big Ten, and, and A&M had their struggles against certain teams. I just think it's a bad matchup for, for, for Nebraska. I think A&M will bring them in the muck. I think their physicality, the way they play defense, and the fact, how about this? To me, the big thing that stands about A&M is they're a veteran team. They've been together for a while. I'm going to take A&M to get it done. I like this Nebraska team. I'm, a, I'm on them, again, almost a full five percentage points better at the free throw line. You have to be able to hit some shots in March, and I just don't think this Texas A&M offense can do, uh, can do it. They, I, I think that conference tournament, you know, yeah, they beat Kentucky. Uh, that was huge, but... Uh, I, I'm still not a huge believer in this Texas A&M team. I mean, they lost to Vanderbilt. Um, I, I think that was a pretty bad loss. Like they've lost to some bad teams. So uh, I, I'm on Nebraska here. I think they. I think they take care of business. No, I think this is my strongest disagreement against Colby so far in this tournament. Uh, flashback to last year, Texas A&M had a big look ahead spot to the second round possible matchup against Texas. They could this year they could possibly play Houston, right? So it, it's last not, year it's, that's not compared. Last year a Big Ten finesse team in Penn State rained a ton of threes against Texas A and M, and they win it outright. Correct, Sean. So yeah. Nebraska they have attempted the thirty fourth most three pointers per field goal attempt this season. They shoot it well too, thirty five point eight percent from the field. Also, according to Torvik, since February first, this team is not a finesse team. Nebraska has the third best defensive efficiency in the country. I think they get this thing done and they give Houston all they can handle in the second round, possibly win that game. It is Tomonaga time. He is this year's uh, Marquise Noel. Let me, I, I got to go let, feed let, my Tamagotchi. Let, let me tell you something here. Texas, Matt, well, Texas on, want, A&M fans don't give a shit about we are, Houston. We already know. They give you. a shit about Texas. There's we, a huge difference. Mac? It was a good run, Lynn Sanity, Tomonaga. Texas A&M, the athletes, they remember last year, veteran group like Colby said, Buzz rolls here. They're gonna they're gonna open this up in the second half. Athletes all day. SEC over. What do I do? Play, play the music. Yeah. He started at Virginia Tech. He now plays for Texas A&M. Boots Radford. They don't run offense. Who gives a shit? You should wear a vest. I'm wearing a hokey shirt right now. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm fully committed. I, like I said, I'm gonna reveal at least one picture from my private collection. When I had some some very special moments with a picture of Buzz Williams outside of the arena. Next next up, we're heading over to the Vermont 
Duke game. 13-4 matchup in the South. Brooklyn, New York feels like a little bit of an advantage uh, for Duke, even though Vermont's only a couple miles away. 410 on the West Coast. Duke minus 12, minus 850 on the money line. Vermont plus 575. 132 and a half is the total. 62 and a half. First half under. So this Vermont team is different. Why? It's the worst offense they've had in 12 years, and it's the best defense they have in 12 years. Uh, that's kind of the starting point for this one because, as Colby mentioned earlier, it, did, it does kind of feel like Duke got a little bit of a soft uh, matchup here. They gave a pass, man. And, and our guy, Filipowski, could have a monster game here against the interior of Vermont, which in some ways almost makes their demise even more enjoyable. If he has some sort of bonkers game, I, I, unless someone talks me out of it here, it does seem like, and, and you know, we saw this Vermont team like not cover in no. game after game in the AE tournament. So uh, not much for me to add to that other than I, I think, I, I think I'm going to like Duke unless uh, team Ryan talks me off of it. Colby, what about you? No, I mean, you got like, this is a great, this is, they're doing favors to Duke All right, uh, so read between the lines. Like, I mean, and, and I would even argue that I don't even know that their defense is that much better. It's just the rest of the conference is that much down. So you're getting okay. UMBC when they're trash. You're getting NJIT when they're trash. Maybe a little bit more you know, athleticism this year. Yeah, I mean, who? Vermont. Vermont. Uh, Which helps on defense. Yeah. All right, so you're but uh, I think it's just a bad matchup. I think if you're a Vermont fan, you won one of those Big Ten schools, and, All right. and you didn't get that. And you got a, an, a Duke team that, even though young, they're super athletic, and I think it's a bad draw. Vermont, you would think, would be great behind the arc. Like, oh, a bunch of white kids in the, you know, up in New England. All they do is gym rats shooting the three. They're only 33.5% from behind the arc. Uh, Duke, you mentioned uh, Vermont's defense being better than average. What about Duke? I mean, Duke's defense, 26 in adjusted defensive efficiency, seventh in offensive efficiency. Uh, they're right up there with a, a potential title contender. So uh, Duke wins and they roll. Mac, what do you got? I got Vermont. Mm. Uh, I think everybody has fallen in love with Vermont the last couple of years, and they get a bad rap. I, they can't get it done, but you look at it. They lost to Florida State by seven. They lost to Arkansas by four. I also think this Duke is, team is way fucking overrated. Lost to Virginia Tech by 22. Mm, that was this year. Well, no, I'm talking about in, in the tournament. tournament. In the tournament, <laughs> under Beckner, they have hung in these games. I think they keep it close. I don't know if they win. But if it gets close, Flopkowski, no. he might just flop around. You're letting your the old, hate, letting the old your ankle, hate the old you, ankle buddy. might just start fucking twitching. It gets loose. Noah, it, it changes. Uh, he he notices a change in weather. If it's going to be really humid up there, he'll feel that in his knee. I can't uh, trust so, Sorry, hold on. Someone, uh, Jake, we need a Photoshop of Filipowski with one of those like barn, yeah. uh, wind uh, <laughs> direction devices on his head. That would uh, that would be pretty funny. Noah, what are you doing in this game? I'm taking Duke here. Vermont just. They're not as good as they've been in years past. The AE was not as good as it's been in year past, years past. Uh, I didn't really think that Vermont saw many challenges. Duke loses two straight entering the NCAA tournament. This is, I think, a get-up spot. They prove a point. They win this game. They get murdered by Houston in the second weekend, and we all uh, life is all good after that. Perfect. Let's go. That, that, uh, that red versus blue, too. Wow. Very toxic right now. Grambling, <laughs> Montana State uh, winner will be taking on Purdue in the 4:25 p.m. Uh, window out of Indy. So Purdue should have the crowd there. I don't. Montana State I know is a huge program, but Purdue should have the crowd. 4:35 on the West Coast. We're going back to Spokane, Washington, where Alabama, four seed in the West, takes on College of Charleston, the 13 seed out of the West. Alabama laying only nine and a half here, minus 485 on the money line. Charleston plus 370. 173 and a half is the total under first half, 82 and a half. This is one of, I, I mentioned it a couple of games, but there's a lot of pace battles in this year's first round. This is not one of them. Stylistically, this is not one of them. I feel like you should have included Alabama in that category of the committee, maybe gave them a softer matchup. While this game is uh, going to have a ton of variance, it does seem like Alabama is just a much better version of Charleston. I don't know about that. I I, I like Charleston. Charleston. I disagree too. Charleston coming in hot. Uh, they've won twelve in a row, and Alabama on a neutral court, one in five ATS this season. I already threw out that trend about when the four seeds, when they get, uh, when they're laying more than ten, it can be trouble for the four seed. And I, I would counter. I would say Charleston's comfortable playing fast, and this Alabama defense is a real liability. Alabama's already, I think, licking their chops 
These uh, big time, you know, these guys are getting paid a ton of money. They don't think they have to worry about the first game in the tournament. They're going to be looking past this Charleston team, and I think uh, that is not a good idea. I think Charleston covers and uh, might be a live dog. Colby? No. Like, and look, I, I've been a skeptic no. on Alabama all year. The committee gave them an amazing path. Like, I actually, like, they've never gone past the Sweet 16, and that includes when they had Sprewell and McDice, right? They never have been there. But I see a path, and I'm a skeptic. I think that offense is bullshit in the tournament. But when you get placed where they're placed against the opponents they're, they're placed against, I think you might even want to jump in on a Bama future because there's not a lot of meat on the bone. And to me, Charleston's been phony all year to me. If you watch the games, they, they are not last year's Charleston. Uh, and when you look at Alabama and, and the way that they could score, look what they did against Moorhead State. They beat Moorhead State by, what, 30? 32, uh, they beat Indiana State by 22. High variance, right? Right, they, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, what? All right, uh, they beat, they, they destroyed these great mid-majors. Eastern Kentucky was a one seed. They beat them by, oh, like 45 points. Yeah, that's what I was saying. They play, they, they play the same yeah. style, and they're a much better version. They're, at least they're equipped with better yeah, athletes. Well, and if it was last year's Charleston team, maybe I'd buy in a little bit more. If you watch Charleston throughout the year, Shout out to Pat Kelsey for getting him there. I thought it was a great coaching job. Better than what he did the year before. I don't think they're that good. I don't think they're that good. And I think no, they're just no, going to get no, destroyed no. here. Mac? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm laying it with the tide. Uh, they haven't made shots in the last couple of weeks, and they're going to get up plenty here. I think they make their shots here. Weird having three Alabama teams playing in uh, Spokane. Hmm. Bama, Auburn, and UAB. <laughs> Some carpooling. Is What's going, going on, on here? It's got to be an angle on them hiring a Washington head coach. Get your uh, South, yeah, get your Southwest yeah, reward points. Let's dropping go. some bags <laughs> out there. All right, Noah, what are you doing? For what it's worth, the cocktail napkin loves this game. Uh, it only has Charleston as a five-and-a-half-point dog yes. here. Yes. Alabama is in poor, poor form. Two and four in the last six games straight up. Poor, poor form, isn't that? Uh, their opponents are scoring 96.8 points per game in that span. You're like a 1940s teacher. Poor form, Mark. Speaking of teachers, Nate Oates, he's now fat and happy after being a high school <laughs> yeah. teacher in Michigan after his extension that's made him the top five highest paid coaches in college basketball. What has he done? Colby has mentioned that he hasn't even gotten to pass the Sweet 16 yet. Fat and happy. However, I, I think Charleston's head coach, head man, Pat Kelsey, he's the next best next best big thing here. The Cougars, they're going to make this a track meet. They're going to allow Alabama to run. Charleston truly does wow. want to run. The CAA, third slowest tempo in by conference in the country. Uh, and I think they're th going to thrive in the fast-paced game here. Last year, Charleston was a dog with fleas. This year... They are the dog begging to be rescued at the animal shelter. <laughs> love it. Don't worry, College wait, wait, of Charleston. Wait, 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 I'll wait, make wait. you mine, and I'll Hold love on. you to the full. Speaking of Hold dogs, on. weren't you on Charleston last year? No, no he I was, was on not San Diego State. Charleston it had was the my, guy that stole his prom date. Yeah. It was my you number one lock. This. I wrote it up yeah. on sportsgamblingpodcast.com. <laughs> San Diego State covered that. Now Ryan he's on Larson. Charleston. He's back. Ryan, Ryan Larson. Larson fouled with one second to go. We got it to the free throw line. They covered. <laughs> Uh, speaking of dogs, if you guys sign up over at Underdog Fantasy, use that promo code SGPN, get a 100% deposit match up to $100. I mean, they got pickups for everything, NBA, NHL, and, of course, college basketball. Add a little spice to your life with a nice underdog pick them to uh, pair. It pairs perfectly with a nice bracket, some college basketball uh, wagering uh, underdog fantasy is the place to go for daily fantasy entries. Use that promo code SGP and get the hundred percent deposit match. Get you covered over there. And of course, if you haven't started your pool yet, what are you waiting for? Go to sports slash champs, set up your pool there. You get a free entry or you just get a free entry as well, but why not run your pool through champs? Uh, it is highly recommended that you do that and it helps support the sports gambling podcast and you get Two free shots at a thousand bucks. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. Ryan, a lot of people have Houston uh, <laughs> claiming they're going to be the champs this season. Sorry, I'm choking a little bit on I, some water. I, 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 <laughs> while, while he's choking, I, I, have, I have an underdog pick him here okay, that sure. we can give out. Uh, nine straight games. 
Uh, Josh Aduro has finished with less than 39 and a half fantasy points. This is an NIT game. Uh, you guys might be asking why NIT. Okay, I'll take I you to the me. NCAA tournament game. <laughs> Danny Wolf forward for Yale. I'll go with his higher than 20 and a half points and rebounds. He's averaging 23.1 points rebounds <clears throat> per game this season. He's playing against Auburn. I feel like we're getting a little bit of a discount on a mid-major going up against a, a high major with really good momentum right now. Give me Wolf. Higher than 20 and a half points. Of this Danny Wolf guy. I called, him a green, I called him a greenie earlier. I don't think you want to take the over. Good luck. 16 Smash seed out of the, the south. higher, Ryan. Underdog fantasy. Lower, sorry. Uh, <laughs> 16. I was actually talking about not underdog. But 16 uh, seed out of the south. Longwood taking out the one seed out of the south. Long. Houston. Cox. Uh, we're in Memphis, Tennessee, which is not that far from Longwood. 6.20 p.m. on the West Coast. Houston laying 24 and a half, minus 5,000 on the money line. Longwood plus 1,800. 128 is the total. First half under 61. Uh, Houston's good. That's, that's the big note I have on this one. Uh, they're also in my contender list. Uh, I, I just, um, yeah, I don't know. This, uh, this, this Longwood wasn't good in the Big South. They turn over the ball a lot. This seems like a bad matchup for Houston. It seems like Houston could really make them want to quit. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I love this Longwood team, but they celebrated when they won that conference tournament. That was, <laughs> dude, they, they had a magical run. Yeah. I mean, the two point win against High Point, the overtime win against High Point again in the tournament. My thing is, I'm not going to lay 24 and a half points with a team that's sub 70% oh, no. from the line. <laughs> now, maybe it won't matter because they'll just be dunking on these guys. Yep. But um, Longwood is 157th overall on Ken Palm. And as we all know, uh, when the one seed is favored by more than 20 points, uh, the 16 seed is actually 14 and 5 ATS if they're within 200 of Ken Palm. Not only are they within 200, they're 157. So. I think there's a decent amount of advanced metrics. And again, don't lay 24 and a half points with a team that can't get 70% from the line. So I'm actually taking Longwood uh, plus 24 and a half. I probably won't be betting this because I don't think they're a live dog. And, you know, taking 24 and a half points is white knuckling it, but I'm still going to pick them here uh, at 24 and a half. That's crazy. White, white tiger is better than white. <laughs> Right. No, I'm just going to let you know. White Knuckles, uh, one of the reserves on Longwood. <laughs> Shout out Ike Belton. He's a passionate listener of the college basketball experience. He's a Longwood basketball alum. I received this in my DMs today. Uh, he quoted this from College Sports Only on Instagram. In every tournament since COVID, since 21, uh, 2021, a top two seed has lost in the first round outright to a team with a phallic euphemistic oh, wow. dick name, basically, is what we're talking about. In 2021, Oral Roberts defeated Ohio State. In 2022, St. Peter's defeated Ooh, Kentucky. Like In 2023, Fairleigh Dickinson defeated Purdue. And that's, you do have the pulse on cock. Yeah. That's no, three dick, years dick. in a row. Yeah, dick, my bad. And it, it, it quotes, once is a happenstance, twice is a coincidence, three times is a pattern. In 2024, Houston will face Longwood. I... I, I Dude, I, I want it. a dick rubbed on me tonight. Ryan, I, let Noah do his uh, angle here. Sorry. I, I love, <laughs> I, I love uh, your input, Ike. I can't take him on the money line. However, they're going to cover this game. Uh, the quote is, they will fall dictum to this trend. Oh, uh, I like lastly, that. Lastly, Ike, Ike says, just thought I would throw this in here so you can mention it on the pod. Go Lancers. So shout out to our guy, Ike. Mac. Kelvin Sampson is going to lay yeah. the long yeah. wood right yeah. on the table. <laughs> He's in by fucking 40. Long. This Cox. is uh, leg seven of the Big 12 parlay. Sean, <laughs> Sean failed to mention the fact that while Houston not good at the line, they are still better than Longwood. Yeah. Houston leads I the... I buried that nugget. For, for what it's worth, I think Moorhead State is this year's dick name yes. or whatever. Come on. That wins it's great right. news for Moorhead. Uh, Houston leads the country uh, with... 10 point or more, 10 0 runs or more uh, with 38. They average more than one of those a game. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to see at least, uh, at least one 10 0 run in this one. I'm laying, I'm laying the Longwood as uh, Mac uh, late. That was kill shot. That was bo both great job by Noah and Mac on that one. All right, next up, we got JMU, the private schools of Virginia, who some say are taking over the state from a sports perspective. Uh, they're trying to buy it, the private school pussies. 640 on the West Coast, but we're up in New York. Where Wisconsin, the five seed in a nice 5-12 matchup here in the South, 
Wisconsin laying five, minus 225 on the money line, plus 185 for the JMU Dukes. 145 is the total. First half under 68 and a half. Uh, Colby's going to scream at the clouds at how good JMU was. Uh, they won all these games, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm back on a positive Big Ten angle here because, again, I was looking at some style stuff. You know, I like the style uh, makes a fight uh, angle. And it seems like Wisconsin plays some similar style of defense as Appalachian State. And then I look and I see, holy crap, JMU only lost three games all year, but two of them were to App State. So I'm going to start my position on Wisconsin here, and I'll let one of you guys talk me over it, off of it. Colby? No, I do think this is a trendy play, but... JMU is the trendy play. Yeah, I yeah. do think a lot of people like JMU here, but I still go back to Staples or Staples. Really? Okay. And I, I think JMU, we saw it. They won in Michigan at Michigan State. They have the more talented team, and I think that's going to be the... like. I also think they've been disrespected to go 31 and three to be a 12 seed is one of the worst things I've ever seen when you like, especially when you have Michigan state as a nine, that uh, is unbelievable. To Ken me. Palm, Ken Palm, 58 best team. So, I mean, with I, I'm fading Wisconsin here. I'm, I'm with Colby. I think JMU just kind of a more, more cohesive team, and, and you can rely on JMU a lot more than this Wisconsin team. I mean, the Wisconsin team started out great, completely fell apart in the middle of the season. JMU shows up in close games, 8-2, and two, and they actually, you would think against a Big Ten team, they're going to be out physical, but I actually think they can bring the physicality to this matchup. Wisconsin was 3-8 and eight, last 11 games in conference uh, play. Uh, and, you know, last but not least, uh, I mean, you look at this... Look at this Wisconsin team. They let Rutgers put up 78 fucking points. I mean, if that isn't a red flag, I don't know what is. And that wasn't that long ago. That was in the middle of February. So I think this uh, Wisconsin team got hot, quote unquote, in the Big Ten tourney, still lost to Illinois by six, beat a Purdue team, which we all think is fraudulent, uh, beat Maryland, who sucks, and had a nice win over Northwestern. Like, I, I just don't think that they're that good. And I think they're going to uh, disappoint their fans. So yeah. Give Knock. me JMU. Oh, this is a public dog. Come on. I mean, everybody loves JMU. Half the people that are talking about JMU haven't even fucking watched JMU. JMU is good. I've seen JMU in person. Radford had them beat at the buzzer. Uh, JMU too. They don't like physicality. They're a talented team. Yes. Veteran, but Wisconsin's found themselves. They found themselves in the big 10 tournament, scoring the ball more. And I, I like Wisconsin to roll here. Wait, are you saying the Big Ten is better than the Sun Belt? Because I would argue that. No, uh, no, but I would say this is a good spot for Wisconsin. <laughs> no, because everybody's disrespecting Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, I'm with Sean. They got super hot in the Big Ten tournament. They were draining threes left and right when they really haven't been an effective three point shooting team all season long. That won them a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament. Their confidence as their confidence is at an all-time high. You know what, James Madison, they have the second-best three-point defense in the country. Also, offensively, Wisconsin, 345th opponent three-point percentage, 37.1%. James Madison's 40th in the country. I think James Madison wins this game. Not only have they beaten Michigan State on the road, I view Wisconsin as pretty similar to Michigan State with the Staples and just defensive-minded group. James Madison wins this game outright. You love uh, those public dogs. Hold on. I'm right. So, uh, again, Max, Max safely on the boat with me. Yeah. But because uh, I, I know that I know Noah and Colby go so, so, so deep. So deep. I, but, I didn't take me so, so deep. But, but then they're talking about this win against Michigan State, where Michigan oh, State no. you went, fell what, for it, Colby. went, went he one for trap. 20 behind the line and 23 of 37 at the free throw line. They had a post game expected win margin of 15 in that game. That nice was, try. Give me the Staples. That was in East Lansing. This Give me is the a staples. neutral site game. Give me the Staples. Wisconsin fans will be constipated. The three-point right? defense is not a fluke. They went one for 20 because they're the second-best three-point defense. 
Terrence Shannon Damn. went off on Wisconsin Body in bag the championship game. Uh, if there's one guy that resembles Terrence Shannon, it's Terrence Edwards for uh James I'm just Madison pointing here. out that they're 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 both citing uh, this as a reason why JMU is going to be good in a game in uh, March. It seems like someone's jealous that Virginia yeah. Tech TCU. lost their luster. No, I, I'm not. I'm not because we're going to be know what? Mm. I'm going to be standing and applauding the Duke fans. I'm sure there won't be any in Vegas because oh, they're all wow. pussies. But I will be applauding the ones as they exit after losing to the Staples of Wisconsin. We'll By be, the way, we'll uh, be watching this game while we're doing the Vison show, right? So, oh, what nice swing line uh, is also red, so that's a sign. Nine eight matchup here in Indy. 655 on the West Coast. TCU, Utah State. We got a Big 12 Mountain West matchup. Danny Sprinkle and the boys catching four points as the eight seed in the Midwest. 155 on the money line. TCU minus 185. 150 and a half is the total. First half under 71. Uh, this is a very, very troubling spot for me because I had TCU written down as we're going to bet TCU in March. Did this long time ago. And then I, and I was looking at the spread. I'm like, well, wait a second. This is an absolutely great matchup for Osabar inside on Utah State. I like what you did there. See what I did there? Yeah. I strapped up my fucking tank. Oh, yeah. And I dove right in. Oh, yeah. I went feet first, though, so I got a little uh, one of those saltwater enemas they tell you to watch out for. Uh, I think I'm going to be on Utah State here, even though they screwed me last year. Colby? Oh, man. Danny Sprinkles done so good, but he got robbed here. This is another one of the, the, the like, this is completely disrespectful they do not they should not be playing tcu in the first round oh no but um, they are it, it's just once again if i was uh you know anyone with the mountain west i'd take a blow t i'd go to indianapolis and take a blow torch to that fucking building um but uh yeah i mean i i it's a bad matchup tcu has better athleticism better experience better guard play it's not going to end well. I'll take the frogs minus the points. The hypnotodes got you hypnotized, Colby. No way. Danny, sprinkle, get the donuts ready. I'll tell you why. First off, I'm on this website, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. I clicked on this March Madness betting commandments, and underneath I see thou shalt not worship false idols. Colby is bringing all these gifts and presents to this golden calf known as Jamie Dixon, who is 9 and 17 ATS. I say tear down that golden calf. We worship one whoa, God. Whoa, whoa, Danny The God Sprinkle, of the Mountain West. Yeah, I think is 0 and 2 ATS in, in the NCAA. Okay, okay, Montana small State, yeah. please. Small, small sample size. Just saying 0 please. and 2 is 0 and 2. So you, 7 now, 1. Come on. Well, if he's 1 and 2, he's going to be better than Jamie Dixon. Or at least uh, similar. Mac? Oh man, uh, TCU's gonna roll them. Uh, this is this is a horrible matchup for Utah State. Utah State defends the three well. They overachieved. Um, great year, but at the same time, a bunch of you get all these transfers. They overachieve. TCU, they're 24, 25 year old men, and they've been really good in the tournament recently. I mean, they beat Seton Hall two years ago in the first round by 30. They should have beat Arizona. They should have beat Gonzaga last year. They're going to roll Utah State. I love Utah State. Utah wrong. State doesn't have Logan to lean yeah. back on. Wrong place, yeah. wrong time. Yeah. No. TCU rolls. Yeah, I haven't really been snippy about the NCAA tournament uh, committee's seedings. However, right here, right now, I'm going to be mm. in. Utah State won the regular season in the Mountain West. Best Mountain West we've ever seen. Eight seeds disrespectful. And you know what? You just get a tough matchup when that happens. Uh, TCU with... Jamie Dixon with TCU, I, I think the against spread numbers in the NCAA tournament has been a little bit better. Personally, I was on the wrong end of possibly the worst bad beat I've ever experienced last year when TC rolls the ball down the court with 1.3 <laughs> seconds left that against Gonzaga, and they great. drain the fucking three. So you can't tell me that Dixon doesn't know the number, that he doesn't care. TCU covers. They win this game outright against Utah. <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, Jamie Dixon's stats, where was he at before TCU? So... Like, he's been pretty good at Pitt. TC. Okay, yeah. that's why. He's his ACC problems? Suck ass. I like that. He, yeah. le he left his problems in Pittsburgh. Yeah, eat shit, Pitt. It's, yeah, it's a parallel to Noah there. I, who knew that Jamie Dixon and Noah had something in common? Who, who, knew, who knew that Mac would be on another Big 12? Yeah, yeah. That's seven that, in a row, eight in a row. <laughs> Utah State, third in the nation. They're still Mountain the West third. to me. Yeah. You see, you're still Mountain yeah. West. Oh, so Mountain West, yeah. I'm Mountain West. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, let's. I'll, I'll bet on. Uh, I'll, I'll take Great Osabar. They cover the number. They lose the game. They cover the number. See what I did there, Sean? I gave myself two outs. Twelve seat. Last one. Twelve five. 
12-5 matchup. I'll support whoever's in government. In the West. Yeah, just tell me where to walk. Spokane, Washington, 7.05 p.m. on the West Coast. Grand Canyon, St. Mary's. St. Mary's lane, 5.5, minus 230 on the money line, plus 194. Grand Canyon, 131.5 is the total. First half under 61. Very, very cool to see that we've had one of these uh, chiropractors school elevate themselves to Division One basketball, have an old crowd. I think it's an online university. Who knows? Uh, they were a sexy pick by the bet detective himself, C.J. Sullivan, earlier in the season. Uh, so I, 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 he, they were written right under TCU in terms of we're going to bet this team in March. Now that we're here, going against a team like St. Mary's, uh, who is always a tough matchup. My worry there is St. Mary's kind of had the season this year, but... They got Gonzaga and the champions. There's all these positive things. Anyway, Colby, what are we doing here? Because this one has me a little bit torn. Yeah, and I know the the. I'm just so glad my Uber driver didn't say uh, Grand Canyon because oh. this one was I thought one of the harder ones to pick for me. Um, I do I do believe in in Randy Bennett. He's familiar with Spokane, Washington. The team is too. Uh, but I do think they've had their issues outside of the WCC. Was it Missouri State that got them? Uh, they also lost, I think, the UNLV, if, or they, they might have beat UNLV, but it was double overtime, if memory serves me correct. Um, they've had their issues in the Weber. mid-major ranks. Weber got them. Yeah, Weber got them. Uh, I do think Grand Canyon is actually the more athletic team, and I think that can actually pause, you know, cause some problems there. But I'm, I, So I'm going to take the points. I, I get the angle that St. Mary's could go deep because I do think the winner of this is going to have a nice... I mean, this is why I'm I, I'm kind of bullish on Alabama, which I never thought I would be in March. That side of the bracket is open. All so right. is it, the it, Grand Canyons live or no? I do. I think they're right. live. I think they're live. They're they're the more athletic team, and I think they just have a couple difference makers. And the fact that St. Mary's St. Mary's is great. I feel like in the WCC when you know your opponent. Yeah. Yeah. Grand Canyon they haven't had experience with. I think that they can they can cause a couple problems for them that maybe they don't see traditionally in the WCC. Uh, fascinated by this game, though. Grand Canyon, I think defense is pretty underrated. I mean, I know St. Mary's has the better defense, but I think Grand Canyon's defense is underrated. I mean, you look at ninth in the nation at defending the two, uh, tenth in the nation uh, effective field goal uh, defense. But really, come on, if it's close, if you're on the fence, Hemming and Hahn over there, Colby, let me let me help you. One team is seven point nine percent better at the line. That team is Grand Canyon. Uh, get your camera ready. Uh, get out the break out the skywalk, folks. Uh, Grand Canyon. Get you one of those uh, painted dream catchers from a Native American roadside stand, because Grand Canyon is going on a roll here. St. Mary's. The goal of the entire season for St. Mary's is be better than Gonzaga. They did it. Their season's over. They lose. I, I'm with you. Give me, give me it, Grand Canyon. Give me some of those energy rocks. Let's go, <laughs> Mac. I'm on the Gales. I, I think every year during the 5-12 game and everybody goes, oh, they're going to get upset. No, nope. they just keep on winning. They beat VCU last year. They beat Indiana by it's about true. 100. They just win. Randy Bennett, I, like, they're not sexy. I know that. They're unathletic. But Aiden Matheny, I mean, they just get – Mahaney, they get shit done. They're going to move on. I think they win by 7 or 8. Give me the, uh, the Gales. No. Colby references his Uber driver. I'm going to reference my sister. I think she knows Whoa. how to co uh, handicap college basketball. However, she doesn't know how chaotic March Madness can get. She predicted four, four total first round, uh, uh, first round upsets. Grand Canyon was one. Not only did she predict them to win in the first round, she predicted the Antelopes to go all the way to the Final Four. Uh, she quoted. The analytics showed it, uh, showed shooting percentage, efficiency rating, winning percentage, and free throw percentage. Does she subscribe to four, the bottom line, Bob? Well, as yeah. her four uh, <laughs> references for handicapping this game and why she took Grand Canyon to win state uh, Saint, against St. Mary's. Uh, instant reaction pod, I had St. Mary's in my final four, so this is a really big sibling duel off. I'm going to take the Gales with Mac. Hmm. I, I didn't know I was going to learn so much about Noah's family. Hopefully we can get a report on your vacation next. Uh, I am on Grand Canyon. Ooh. Caddyshack was a great. Restaurant. I think. I think. So, uh, yeah. Fuck it. Let's dance. Uh, so I got a. I specifically again watching all the tape here. I'm like these fucking. They're too busy scuba diving. I do think that. The, I got uh, the bends. 
I do think that Grand Canyon could give St. Mary's defense a little bit of trouble with some of the stuff they do. So uh, we're taking the points. Uh, for those who keep track, I have to a number, number of dogs tonight. So. Hey, nice shout job, out son. to Hall of Fame Bets, uh, a sponsor of our locks and our dogs and a team parlay. Head over to HOFBets.com. If you're talking parlays, optimize those parlays. NBA soccer and college basketball will be live for the tournament. So get signed up now so you don't miss out. HOFBets.com, promo code SGPN, 50% off your first month. Download that Hall of Fame Bets app. Uh, like we said, uh, producer Josh on a heater with some of these NBA player props, all courtesy of the good folks over at HOFBets.com. Kramer, what do you got? Lock New Mexico. Hmm. Lock Grand Canyon. Oh, wow. So you're taking Grand Canyon the points for your lock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lock. Ooh. I had to pause for a second. Lock Wisconsin. Ooh. That one's not good. Dog. Eh, give me the little baby dog. No, you know what? Let's go bigger dog. Give me the toppers. Western Kentucky. Oh, man. I love that. I love that Plus, dog. Shock has never failed us before. <laughs> I Ooh. almost want to take that as my dog as well. Do it. Uh, let's start off with uh, Colgate sucking. Baylor minus 14. They're just going to fuck them up. Cannot wait. Uh, you guys are all wrong about one team. Nebraska. Time to feed our uh, Tomanakis. Let's go. Nebraska laying the point. And for my last uh, lock here. So, oh, man, this is tough because there's a bunch of stuff I like, some of which Kramer already gave out. Do I co-sign it? Don't really want to fade San Diego State. New Mexico against Clemson. Yeah, you kind of almost have to lock that one up. I do like Utah State. Um yeah, I'll go uh, University of New Mexico, lay in the two for my dog. I'm going Grand Canyon on the money line. Let's go. Colby? Locking up uh, Alabama, mm. minus the points. Locking up Duke, minus the points. Locking up Baylor, minus the do, points. Do you want me to get you a, a Dal yeah. like a Dallas yeah. Cowboys starter jacket, Colby? <laughs> The dog is UAB. I'm sorry, San Diego State. The oh, wow. Heat. It all comes crashing down. The heat is in the hat. The heat is in the hat. Uh, Matt, give us one lock and one dog. On Wisconsin. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, he threw up the W. Let's w. go. On Wisconsin and for my dog. Plus 575. Kentucky goes down Thursday night. Duke goes down <laughs> Friday night. Wow. Vermont outright. Let's oh, fucking go. Crazy. I like it. I like it. I hope it happens. Noah? Uh, lock New Mexico against the spread. Viral tweet. Got to back it. Lock Nebraska against the spread. Uh, dog, I'm taking Charleston. Money line against Alabama. Oh, Woo! you know what? Mm, I like that one as well. Do I switch to Charleston? No. Okay. No, I'll no, 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 no. I'll stay, I'll stay no, with Grand no, Canyon. No, no. But I, I, I like... <laughs> I like Noah's uh, Charleston play. Do we give out official parlay? We all like Grand Canyon. Yes. We all like New Mexico. We all like West. I, I think we just do Grand Canyon, Western Kentucky. Call it tonight. Yeah. One last thing. Brent's favorite play, New Mexico. Mm, all right. Lock it up. I'm going to go put a grand on that right now. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We will reveal our brackets on tomorrow's episode. Make sure you smash that subscribe smash. button to the Sports Gambling Podcast and the College Basketball Experience. Uh, give us a follow, tweet, share, rate, review. Enter the contest, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. What do I got to do to give away some a thousand bucks to you subscribers? Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Let's get some cash. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, a second of the money green. He's Ryan. Shout out to Logan. All first half unders. What the fuck is a Wahoo? March Madness is here. Mm. Kramer, let it ride.